Hey everyone, I'm Ben and you're watching The Snecker Show. And in case you're having any deja vu right now, yes, I already did this same video with the same title and the same topic. This is a remake. And in case you're having any deja vu right now, yes, I already did this same video with the same title and the same topic. This is a remake. And the reason I'm doing a remake is because uh, you know, a couple weeks ago I was watching the Total Recall remake on TV and I got to thinking, you know, I also lack creativity and talent, so how about instead of coming up with a new idea, I just take an old one that was successful and I redo it. Instant win, right? Actually, the difference between this and the, uh, the Total Recall remake is that this version is going to be better than the original. See, the truth is, the first one got a lot more views than I expected, and uh, had I known it was going to be so popular, I might have put a little bit more work into it. So I'm going to add some stuff to this video and try to make it uh, a worthwhile watch, even if you did see the original. I'm going to cover the same topics as the original, but add in some new content covering not only the difference in the, the undersize and OEM size cutter heads, but also noise level changes and power draw differences. We're actually going to test the power draw differences. So I have here the original Shelix cutter head that my wife got me for Christmas in 2019 because she's awesome. And I put this on a, in a wish list with a bunch of other things, and she picked this out because... I'm always complaining about uh, how much tear out I was getting on, on figured pieces of wood. You know, sometimes the grain is a little complicated. It'll go up and down in the same piece of, uh, the same piece of wood, and the straight knives are really tearing stuff out. So I wanted to upgrade to this guy, and also I just hate changing straight knives when they get nicked. So I have the same planer that was used in the original video, and... Um, the challenge right now is that if I want to do some actual side-by-side -side comparisons, there's really only one way to do that. And i got to say, this was a little bit painful, but since uh, everyone was kind enough to watch my, my first version of this and support the channel, I decided to pick up a second one of these so we can do some actual side-by-side -side comparisons. And hopefully by the end of this video, uh, you'll be able to make a good educated purchase decision if you're thinking about buying one of these guys. First, for the benefit of anybody who hasn't seen the Shelix cutter head before or who hasn't seen the inside of one of these planers, we're going to pop the tops off and take a look. Now, to get this open, you just got to pull your wrench out of the, the top cover and loosen up these four screws, and then this just comes right off. And then next, you have these three red screws holding down the the dust port, dust cover, whatever that's called, guides the dust from the blade out through the, the extraction port on the back. You pick it up and you slide it over, and then you have access to your, your blades. And inside there, there's a, this is from the old one, there's a, a cutter head on bearings just like that, and that is holding down these 13-inch steel knives. And this is what comes with the planer originally. There would be three of these in there. And uh, you can see it's got a slot on there. These are all kind of elongated holes, and that allows you to shift left or right a little bit if you happen to get a nick in one of the knives. And um, once the knives are, once they're damaged all on one side, you just flip it around and you have another edge. So uh, these cost, last I checked on the Home Depot website, about $55 for a set of three. Let's just round up or tax and say $60 to make the math easy. Divide by three, it's $20 for each one of these knives, or $10 per edge. Now moving over to your left, we got the, the Shelix replacement cutter head, which you can see looks quite a bit different. First of all, it's in a helical pattern instead of just straight across. So each one of these individual cutters there is at a slight angle. Gives you a little bit of a shear cut. And um, if one of these gets damaged, Last I checked, a box of 10 replacement cutters cost about $35, round up, $40, divide by 10, and you have $4 per cutter or $1 per edge, because each of these has four edges on it. Now, to do the math on that, uh, let's just say uh, you're having some bad luck, and you, you hit a nail with one of these steel knives, and you put, uh, put a nick in there. You might be able to shift it, but if it's bad enough, uh, maybe you have to you decide you're going to replace this edge because it's leaving too many trails on, on the, the finished lumber you're trying to work with. So you flip it, $10 is your cost of going to a new edge. Over here, you rotate this, and $1 is your cost of going to a new edge. Now it's a bad day, 
and you hit another nail or some foreign debris or you have some sand or something that got into a piece of wood and you got to replace this again because it tore up a little section of the blade. Now you're going to have to replace this whole thing so your cost is up to $20 at this point and you rotate your knife over here if the same thing happened and you're up to $2. If it happens again, $3, $30, $4, $40, $50, $60, $70, $80, $90, $100, $200, $300, $400, $500, $600, $700, $800, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000,
Now this is showing right now that I'm removing a sixteenth of an inch, and I have these both configured the same, so a sixteenth is accurately a sixteenth. And I could go down all the way to an eighth of an inch, at which point this safety bar on the front is going to make contact with that piece of wood. And that's just uh, there to make sure that you can't take more than an eighth of an inch pass at any time, because that's uh, it might cause kickback or overload the machine. So that safety bar is going to stop you. Now I go over to the one that I modified with an undersized cutter head, and I'm at a sixteenth of an inch right there, but you can see I'm already making contact with the safety bar. So I actually lost a sixteenth of an inch potential depth of cut by installing the undersized cutter head, because now that cutter head is higher up, so the rest of the body of the planer has to go down lower for the same thing to happen. That includes the rollers. So not only is the... Uh, is the depth, uh, the safety bar going to make contact and limit your depth of cut, the rollers are putting additional pressure on that piece of wood as it's passing through. Now, the, the rollers are spring-loaded, so it's not going to break anything. It's going to cause some minor problems, but not any serious damage to the planer. I originally thought that, uh, that my table might have been flexing, because I had a situation kind of like this, where as the wood was coming out, it was sticking up a little bit like that. And what it turns out was probably happening is that I had some snipe on one end of the board and it was, uh, it was just causing it to look like it was picking up because when it was coming out there was a little bit of a seesaw effect as the, the roller pushed down. So it's not going to bend your table. It's not going to destroy your rollers. However, one thing it will do with that little bit of extra pressure uh, placed on the wood as it's passing through is more pressure down means more drag. Now, the same motor is driving the cutter head in the middle and also driving the two feed rollers. They're connected with a chain. So if there's additional pressure down on the table, it makes the rollers have to work harder to move the board through, and that's drawing away from the power that you'll have for your cutter head. So it's a little bit of subtract subtraction. I haven't measured exactly how much yet, but uh, I probably wouldn't be able to if, uh, without having an undersized Shelix head and a regular size Shelix head. It wouldn't be a one-for-one -one comparison with the, with the steel knives, but maybe it's something I will get to later. And the last thing you have to consider is that this material removal gauge right here uh, will only adjust a small amount. So what ended up happening with the other one is I had to take this off and grind the top of the material removal gauge away so that I could move it up enough so that it was going to show an accurate reading. I can replace that thing later if I ever switch back to a different cutter head or the OEM size. All I have to do is take the screws off that plate and replace it. And there are probably some other ways to do it too, but I saw that as being a pretty low impact in the long term since it was something I could access from the front. But still, it's an aggravation that you have to actually take the time to remove a plate and grind it down or you know, add, add some tape on there and remark everything or try to bend that red bar and you can get to it from the inside. It's all a lot of work, and you're doing this because you wanted to save a little time in removing screws from the undersized cutter head. Now, that just wasn't worth it. I got to talk to a technician from Bird Tool about the roller issue and a few other things, and I wanted to make sure I got some good answers for you guys, so I let him know up front that this was Ben calling from the Snicker Show, and he was like, oh man, no way, I'm a huge fan. I love Snickers. Well, I wasn't going to pass up that opportunity, so I told him I'd send him a box if he just answered some questions for me. He was real friendly and helpful and passed on a pretty cool tip here if you already have an undersized cutter head and you're having issues with your rollers. Take a block of wood like this and cut it so it fits underneath uh, the roller right there. Now watch what happens over here as I lower the planer body down. So you take the pressure off and compress the spring that's above the, the roller block. And that gives you enough room to put a shim in there and take some of that roller pressure off. This, this piece of metal with the two screws in it is what's preventing that from dropping down any farther. I haven't tested this, I haven't tried it, so I'm not going to demonstrate it, but if there's enough interest, I might make a separate video about that. I just wanted to point out that that is an option. He also said that if you bought an undersized cutter head and it's giving you troubles, you can probably switch it out for an OEM size. You just got to contact the company that you bought it from, or if you got it directly from Bird Tool, uh, contact them. There is going to be a fee, and I'm not going to say how much he, he told me because the policy or the price might change, but just keep in mind that it is an option if you have an undersized one and you're having any trouble with it. 
I switched over to my boom microphone so we can do a quick noise comparison. And to do that, I'm just going to run this piece of white oak through both planers separately. And uh, I am going to reduce the volume using software after or before I publish this. And that's just so it doesn't blow anybody's speakers out. But the idea is not to see exactly how loud it would be in your house because your acoustics are going to be different than the distance from you know the camera to the planers. The idea here is just to see what type of noise difference there is and how much of a difference there is between the, uh, the regular steel knives and the Shelix upgrade. And just for kicks, I'm going to do that again with no dust collection and no load. I'll just turn on the two planers so you can hear the difference. The next question that we need to answer is whether the Shelix upgraded planer in fact draws more power than the stock one with the, uh, the steel knives. Now, I think the answer is yes, just because I've heard that the motor sounds like it's working a little bit harder in the Shelix upgraded one. However, you also notice during the sound comparison that this one produces a very high pitched whiny noise and this one does not. So the reduction in that high pitched scream might make it easier to hear the motor uh, working hard in this one. That might just give the impression that it's actually drawing more power than the, the stock model. Maybe that's the case, maybe it's not. But the way we're going to find that out is with a, with a clamp meter. This is going to clamp around the power cord for the two planers. I'll have to do them uh, separately, one at a time, and just take the readings. This will read the, uh, the actual amps that are drawn to the motor, and that's going to let us know the, uh, the maximum power drawn during any planing session. There's actually a max setting on here, so it'll just hit that top number uh, if it keeps uh, hitting a new number, it'll just raise it up, and whatever number shows up at the end is going to be your, your max power drawn during that session. Now, I did some preliminary testing using uh, just the Shelix upgraded one, not the, the new one at the same time. Uh, the results were so unexpected that I thought my, my clamp meter might have gone bad. So I actually went out and picked up another one, just because I wanted to make sure before I published something online showing you know, actual numbers and measurements, and I got the same measurements the second time with the new meter, so that was money down the drain, except for, you know, I got a pretty cool clamp meter now, so can't complain about that, I guess. Uh, so now what we're going to do is sacrifice this big piece of red oak 2x10 to these planers for the purpose of measuring how much power they're drawing. Now I'm going to cut this in half, because I think I only need a 3-foot section. Uh, 6 foot's just too much, it'll make it harder to film. And throughout the course of three feet, we're going to be able to get a good, accurate uh, top measurement for both planers. And that way, I know, uh, I, I know that using this single piece of wood cut in half, that it's the, the same material that's going through there. It's the same density. It's the same grain structure. Uh, so there's not going to be any, any differences between the tests there. I've also uh, made sure that both of the, the in-feed and out-feed tables are flush with the main table. And... Uh, I waxed the main table on both of these, so there's not going to be any additional drag on one over the other. The only real difference between these two is that, uh, see, this one is a 2016 model, this is a 2020 model, and this one has the Shelix cutter head, the undersized one, and this one has the stock knives in it. So uh, other than that, the test, I think, is pretty fair, and I'm really curious to see how this turns out. Let's do a quick walkthrough of the test environment before we start. 
I have the clamp meter hanging off of a line splitter, and the purpose of the line splitter is just to separate the hot and neutral wires so they don't cancel each other out in the reading down here. That's on a 12 gauge extension cord, so it handles 20 amps very well, and that's plugged into a, a, a 20 amp outlet and a 20 amp circuit in the breaker. And then down here on the meter, we are, uh, you're going to see that the decimal place will be off by one just because this model of line splitter uses 10 loops and therefore you're going to see the amps times 10. This gives you better accuracy, but it's not really going to matter too much for this test. Um, so you'll see if it's 150 amps down here, 150.00, that means it's 15 amps. If you see 155, that's 15.5. And uh, over here, let's see, once I start this up, there's going to be an initial spike in power here because the, uh, the motor doesn't have momentum yet, so it draws a little bit more to get started. And then once that uh, kind of levels out, I'm going to hit the max button, and that'll just freeze this at whatever the maximum level is that's reached during the planing session. So you won't see a lot of up and down fluctuation. It'll just uh, hit a number, kind of stay there, and if it goes past that, it'll move up a little bit more. And then that's the number that we're going to average at the end between these two planers. I think I'm only going to use one of these boards for this test, and the other one is going to be for a separate test, which I am going to do now. It's just not going to be included in this video because it's not entirely related to the topic. Uh, I've been doing some power testing with that planer, and I'll just put that in a separate video. So we're going to go for one of these boards, 16 passes, removing a sixteenth of an inch each pass, which is the max I can get to on the one with the undersized Shelix. And uh, that's one rotation of the crank each time. So we'll go um, two passes, two passes, repeat that, probably go empty my dust collection, come back and go in reverse order two and two. And at that point we sh should have a pretty good idea of which one of these is drawing more power and exactly how much.
I was wondering how long it was going to take before that happened. And that was actually, in this case, the first time I think I've tripped this. That was the uh, overheat um, breaker in the planer. So that uh, I saw that coming, but I wasn't sure if it was going to be here or in the wall. My wife heard me putting that music in the video and she's like, what are you watching down there? So, uh, was anybody else completely surprised by how far over the power draw was on either one of these, frankly? It was about six over the, the 20 amp circuit breaker limit on the OEM blades and about 12 over on the Shelix. And you can see I kind of got uh, mixed up at the end there and I didn't run the full second round of tests. I ended up doing just more on this one. Uh, but yeah, you can see this one uh, got worn out, and all that happened really was this thing in the front, this uh, this breaker here. This is just like the circuit breaker in the wall, and when it gets hot enough, it's going to pop out, and that will protect your motor. I opened both of these up just so I could feel around the motor, and actually this one felt quite a bit hotter, which I thought was kind of odd because this this is the one that tripped. So it's always a possibility that that um, just from from time and use that the breaker in the front of this one is a little bit more sensitive than the new one here. And that happens with circuit breakers in the panel as well. If you get a lot of trips in your garage and you're not really going over the limit that much or so you think, uh, you should probably take a look at maybe switching out a, a circuit breaker and that might help you out if you're having problems with, uh, with breakers tripping or if it's just really old. But uh, man, that was a, a big difference. That's why I went out and got a new, uh, new meter originally because there is no way that I am drawing 31 amps on this thing in a 20 amp circuit and it's not tripping the thing at the wall. But they are designed to take a little bit of overload for a period of time so like every time you flip on a tool it doesn't trip the breaker with that initial surge but I didn't think it was that much. Um, so if you have a 15 amp circuit in your garage, first of all, this planer is going to probably wear your grid out. Um, if you have a 20 amp circuit in the garage, You'll probably be fine with either one, but you know how much wood you're probably going to plane and what size and what type. So that, that's why I put the Red Oak 2x10 in there, because I really wanted to make both these things work. I do not plane a lot of Red Oak 2x10s, and uh, it was kind of sad to see that one go, but it didn't really cost me anything, because it was from a tree that came down in a hurricane uh, several years ago, and it's been getting a little bit eaten up by powder post beetles. So that's why that one went into the planer. Um, so if you play in a lot of hardwood and, and large quantities of it, you're either going to want, you know, if you're thinking about upgrading to a Shelix, you're either going to want to take it a little bit slower and maybe take some breaks once in a while and let things cool down, or you're, you're just going to want to stick with the OEM knives. Or, frankly, if you're playing in a lot of wide hardwood panels, you might want to look at getting a planer with an induction motor as opposed to these smaller universal motors. Uh, you're going to find universal motors in... in um, portable planers because they're a lot lighter and you're going to find the the heavier induction motors in the, the stationary planers and you're not going to be able to pick that up and throw it in your vehicle or really move it around in your shop without a mobile base or somebody to help you and also they're quite a bit more expensive last a lot longer but that's not really what this is about it's just to show that the uh, the Shelix cutter head absolutely draws more power than the OEM knives in this test, it averaged out to about 5 amps of difference. So uh, keep that in mind as you're making your purchase decision if your workshop can handle that kind of a load. A lot of people wonder if upgrading to a Shelix cutter head is going to void the warranty on their planer. 
That's a great question, and it's one that I didn't ask myself when I upgraded this one, because I'm pretty sure it was outside of the warranty period, and I was going to do it anyway. I've actually had pretty good luck with DeWalt tools, and in 25 years or so, I've never had to send anything back for warranty repair. Other people may have had a different experience. Uh, this one, however, this is a new planer, brand new, and I would probably not want to void the warranty on this one. So I decided to get an answer for both of us and just call up DeWalt directly to ask that question. The first person I spoke with was a, a repair technician, and I asked if she'd ever heard of the Bird Shelix cutter head, and she said no. It kind of surprised me because I thought it was a pretty popular upgrade for these, but uh, I explained what it was and then uh, asked if installing one of those in my planer would void the warranty. And she gave a really quick answer, said, yes, absolutely, definitely, yeah, yeah, that's going to void the warranty. It sounded more like a reaction, like a safe reaction than an actual well-thought-out answer, so I didn't entirely trust it, and I decided to call back and talk to somebody else. This time I got like a, a Tier 1 service person, and I asked him a different question based on the response for the first one, trying to lead him in on the target. So, I said, I just got a new planer. If my knives go dull and I replace those knives with a different brand, like I get some Powertech knives instead of the DeWalt ones and I put those in there, is that going to void my warranty? And he put me on hold, did a little research, came back a minute or two later and said, yes, if you put a different brand of knives in your planer, that's going to void your warranty. Well, now we're getting somewhere. So I asked him to show me where the warranty was because I wanted to read it. I thought it was going to be like a 30-page legal document, but it was actually just a web page. You can just scroll down a little bit and read the whole thing, or at least what they show to you. Pretty simple. And I said, can you show me on this page where it says that replacing the knives with a different brand would void the warranty? He said, well, it, it doesn't actually say that. Okay, well, what does it say? We found the part where I'll just put it up on the screen so I don't have to remember it exactly, but something along the lines of accessories or uh, damage caused by repairs made by somebody other than a DeWalt uh, authorized service person are not going to be covered under the warranty. Okay, well that makes sense. So that's like if you get a new car and your new car has a, a three-year, 30,000 mile warranty. And after a year, you put on a different brand of windshield wipers and a different brand of tires. That's not going to void the warranty on the whole car. But also, you wouldn't expect the dealer to honor any warranty on those tires or those windshield wipers because they didn't make them and they didn't install them. So I think it's the same thing with the planer. At least that was my understanding, is that if you install a Shelix cutter head in this planer, that cutter head and anything that's affected by it is not going to be covered by the warranty. So, uh, you know, if I switch out this wrench for a different brand, it's not going to void the warranty on the whole planer. If I switch out the knives, it's not going to void the warranty on the whole planer. The cutter head is not going to void the warranty on the whole planer. Anytime you take something in for a repair for a, for a warranty service, they're going to do an assessment to see if the, the repair is necessary because of either an unauthorized uh, repair or some kind of um, you know, damage caused by neglect or misuse. So if you put in this cutter head, let's look at the things that might be affected. Now we already know from the testing earlier that the Shelix cutter head is going to draw quite a bit more power. So the first thing I thought of was well, that's going to put additional strain on the motor. However, we also saw in that same test that they already have a feature built in to protect the motor from overheating. There's a, there's a circuit breaker on here, and the same one is on that planer. So if I decide to run 10,000 board feet through this planer, that's going to put a lot of wear on it, but that circuit breaker is going to overheat and prevent the motor from overheating. It will trip and shut it off. Now on this one, if I'm just a hobby woodworker and I you know, maybe put a couple hundred board feet through here using the Shelix cutter head, it's not really doing anything different. If it gets too hot, it's just going to trip the breaker and protect the motor. So if you take your, your planer in for repair because that breaker keeps tripping and they see that you have a Shelix cutter head, they might not honor the warranty on that breaker because something affected that. You did something that would modify how that, uh, uh, you know, the load on that breaker. However, I don't think that should affect the motor, and I'm not speaking on behalf of DeWalt here, I'm just trying to understand what I was told. Uh, I don't think it would affect the motor because they have a feature in place that's going to protect the motor, and it's not going to affect anything else around here. So, just something to keep in mind if you're going to do the upgrade. It is going to void the warranty on things that are affected by the upgrade and probably nothing else.
Well, there's a lot more I could put into this video, but uh, the truth is I've been working on this on and off for about three or four weekends now, and I really need to get it done because the weekend is almost over again. But right now, there might be a little Sesame Street in the background because my wife is feeding the baby on the other side of the wall, and I'm not going to interrupt that. So what we're going to do now is plane a, a couple of different samples of wood that all pose their own unique uh, planing challenges. We'll start out with this piece of plum that has some bark on there. And uh, this is really rock hard wood and rock hard bark. So this, uh, this is kind of hard on the planer. And some people say that you shouldn't plane bark, but the uh, truth is my tools, my rules. So if I want to run a ham sandwich through one of these, I can do that. I'm going to run this piece of plum wood through there to see how it comes out in both machines. Now, having done this before, I'm going to start with the Shelix planer, and then I'll move over to the, the straight knife one, because I know this one is going to do better on these types of wood. That's the whole reason I bought it. Uh, next, we're going to have an end grain cutting board. I used this in the last video as well. I don't really mind cutting this up, because uh, I think this chestnut oak, very hard wood, uh, again, was... Uh, might have been a little bit higher, too high moisture content when I glued this together, so it, it shrunk and cracked after this thing was taken inside the house. So I'll do a, a few passes on this to see how it holds up with, with each planer. And I've been asked about end grain planing. Uh, I'll do a separate video on that. I'm not going to get into it in this one, but yes, you can do it. You just got to do it right. And next I have another piece of plum wood, which just happens to be a very dense piece. I mean, this, this is as hard and it has a few knots in there, so that might give it some, some challenges. And then moving on to the piece that I showed in the beginning. I've had this for a long time, and you can probably see, if I can get it in the light there, you can, uh, that might do it. You can see how, how chipped up this is. And I don't remember which planer I ran this through or if I just bought it like this, but uh, I've had this piece of wood for a long time. It's very hard, dry, and brittle wood, so I expect that it's going to chip up some more here, but I'll run it through the, uh, the Shelix planer first, and then switch over to the straight knife one, and see if we can clean up some of that on the Shelix before making it worse again. And lastly, I'm going to put through this piece of Ambrosia maple, and I cut this down from, a, or cut this out of a tree that came down in a hurricane, and you can see uh, that the, the grain is kind of fuzzy on this side, but not so much on the other side. And if I flipped it around the other direction, it would be the opposite. So each one of these pieces of wood has some grain that runs in, in different directions. So usually you want to try to plane, whether it's a hand plane or a machine plane or a jointer, uh, you want to try to work so the grain is going in your favor so you don't lift up the grain. But because this is kind of close to the, this is right in the, uh, the center of the tree right there, you got some different directions on either side. So... Uh, this will get a little fuzzy probably on this planer, even though the knives are, are pretty new in here. We'll see how it does in that one. That was a pretty interesting test, I thought. Now, both of these performed pretty well. These are brand new knives in this one, keep that in mind. They don't stay that new for very long, just like the knives in your kitchen where they're, you know, they're great one time when you sharpen them and then a month later you can't cut through a tomato. So that's what you get from steel knives, but man, brand new ones are pretty awesome. It performed pretty well on, on most of these, or at least the steel knives did. Uh, sounded like it was straining a lot more, almost sounded angry going through this piece and it slid it around a lot more as it was going through. I was actually expecting this to, to shatter, to blow apart into pieces from the pressure, but I had the edges rounded over. They're now chamfered because I did another test. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and, uh, this one did pretty well on both of them. 
I was surprised how well this one held up, again with uh, a very light pass and and new sharp knives. I did get some chipping in here from the, the steel knives that weren't there with the Shelix. Um, and that's one of the main reasons that I wanted to switch over anyway was things like this with the uh, uh, you know, Tiger Stripe Maple. And on the Ambrosia Maple, this thing was, it was a challenge because the grain is very loose in this anyway, so it does tend to lift up. But I think both did reasonably well. The Shelix performed a little bit better. There was less, less grain lifting over on this side. But uh, back to that end grain cutting board, just because it's an interesting way to finish up the video. Um, I hadn't really done a comparison on the end grain one, ones before, so I decided that based on the sound that this one was making to do another test. Went over to my router table and I put a chamfered edge on here because that's part of, the, um, part of the way to run end grain boards through the planer without having them blow out. If you just have a, a straight edge on the end, it's going to really, it's going to be too much pressure and you'll just chip off the last chunk. So I put a, a new chamfer on both, uh, both sides and made the same pass again on the higher speed and a 32nd of an inch pass. And I connected it to the meter this time and took measurements. This really surprised me. Again, uh, the Shelix planer came through at a whopping 36.1 amps. And I think that was the highest reading yet in all of these tests. So 36.1 over here. Over on the, on the steel knives, 35.7. That's almost the same. Like we're talking about 0.4 amps of difference. And that, you know, that could have been just a little, little tweak in the, uh, in the wheel when I was turning it. I thought I was taking a 30 second exactly on both, but, you know, just a little bit of a difference could have adjusted that slightly. But that was very close. So... Uh, it's kind of interesting to see how much power this one draws, even on like pine boards, it'll, it'll draw a little more power. But when we get into something really challenging, it seemed like the Shelix was handling the, the much harder pieces of wood with less effort. Well, just something that I noticed anyway. I think that brings us to the end of the video. I can probably keep going, but um, I'm going to put a, put a bow on this one and move on to something else. I hope it was helpful and I uh, hope if you watched the first one that this brought some new information to you that you didn't have before. And if this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. I hope this was enlightening and helps you make a good decision about upgrading your tools. i got to figure out what to do with two planers. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.